take this up in the context of Synoth. Let's just spend a few minutes thinking about Synoth. You saw a documentary early in the semester that focused on Synoth's work from the 1990s when he was covering poverty in India. You saw the documentary on Thursday, Nero's Guess, which focuses on his most recent work about the collapse of the agrarian economy, the crisis in the countryside in India. So I want to ask a few simple questions about Synoth that will draw on what we've been talking about all semester. Remember we said that mainstream journalism and therefore mainstream journalists make a claim. The claim is that they are neutral, that they are outside of ideology, and that they are objective. So we focused on those three claims of mainstream journalism. The ability to report from a neutral position, to do that outside of any ideological framework, and to do that objectively. Now, we critique those. You read in Bennett some of the critique of that. You heard me critique it. So I want to ask some questions that draw on that. Is Synoth neutral? Somebody immediately said no. Do you get a sense Synoth is pretending to be, claiming to be neutral? No. It's, no one would ever mistake Synoth for somebody claiming neutrality. He's very passionate, he's very clear about what his values are, where he sits in the world, what he cares about. So it's quite clear that Synoth is not pretending to be neutral. Okay. Does that mean he's partisan? Does that mean he's taking up a position in favor of one politician, one party, or one particular set of policy proposals? Well, most of you probably aren't familiar with Indian politics, but there are two main parties in India. One is called the BJP, one is the Congress. The BJP is roughly analogous to the Republican Party in this country. The Congress is roughly analogous to the Democratic Party. Then there are lots of minor parties. India has a much more diverse political system than the United States. They have a communist party that's actually been the ruler of certain states. It's been an elected government of certain states. Much broader, but you've got the BJP and the Congress. If you were to ask Synoth, which party do you support, the BJP or the Congress, he would spit express disgust and say neither. He's not a partisan. He's never been identified with either political party. When the BJP was in power, especially in the late 90s, he was a relentless critic of their policies. He reported on the consequences, mostly what he would have said were negative consequences of their policies. When the Congress was elected, same thing. Right? He continued to be a critic, a fairly tough critic of the Congress as well. So he's if you ask who does Sinas support in the Indian political arena, the answer would be he supports no one. Okay? He's never been an advocate for a particular politician or a party or a set of proposals. Does that mean he doesn't vote or doesn't have ideas about who's better or worse? No, of course not, but it doesn't directly affect the reporting. He remains a critic of whoever is in power. All right, so is Sinas liberal or conservative? I think, I think it's good to not say anything, because if those are our only two choices, is Synoth liberal or conservative in the way we tend to use those terms, maybe the answer is neither. That his, his approach to the world doesn't map onto the traditional political groupings, either political parties or these more general labels. You might say, if Synoth is anything, he's a radical. He's radical in the sense that he's always looking, trying to look beyond the surface and go to the root. That's what the word radical means. It means going to the root, to understand the basic systems. So I think it's, even, it's not only impossible to label Synop as a supporter of one or the other major political parties. It's even hard to label him either a liberal or conservative. So what is Synop? Here's what I would suggest is a reasonable description of Synop. Synoth is a reporter. He is a reporter who, even though he is at this point in his career, in his early 50s, as one of the most well-established journalists in India, the kind of journalist who, if he wanted to, could sit back and show up on TV on the talk shows and pontificate, you know, journalists like that? You see them on TV all the time. And they mostly sit in their offices and, and pontificate. Synoth doesn't do that. He goes out into the field. As I said, it's a very important part of his work that he remains an active reporter out in the world, talking to real people, 
observing the world. So he's a good reporter on the ground. But in his work, he's developed a kind of global analysis. If you, if you listen to Sinoth, he's not just talking about what he saw in the villages. He's talking about what he saw in the villages in the context of a, a global economy. So he has developed this larger framework. And he's not shy about locating his reporting in this larger framework. So to me, what Sinoth is, is a very good reporter in the best sense of the word reporter, somebody who is committed to direct observation and information gathering in the world right, by going out and not only engaging officials in the government or the corporate world, but also engaging real people out in the world. Yet he has a sophisticated grasp of how government works, how the global economy works, that he has developed in part through that reporting. If you ask Sinoff, how did you come to understand the world as it is, he would say, well, it's partly through all of this reporting I've done, the accumulation of that experience. Right. Remember that Bennett, one of the suggestions Bennett had for journalists was, instead of being afraid of drawing on your own personal experience, what you've learned through your career, that journalists should do that more actively. One of Bennett's suggestions was journalists sometimes, in fact, pull their punches, afraid of drawing on their own experience out of a fear of being labeled as biased. But I think Sinoth is an example of what Bennett was talking about. Here's this wealth of experience the guy has. Why not draw on it when you're writing about contemporary issues? So it's clear that Sinoth consistently challenges the conventional wisdom of both political parties, of the entire sort of structure of power. He's a, he's a critic of Indian nationalism often. If anybody knows India, India the, the people of India can be as nationalistic, as kind of hyper-patriotic as Americans, right? especially when cricket is involved. They're a little nutty about the game of cricket. Right? You go to India and you'll hear that kind of intense nationalism there as well. And Sinoth has always been a critic of that. He's also not afraid to be critical of what we tend to call neoliberal economics. That's a term you might not be familiar with. And it's a confusing term in the United States because we associate liberal with a certain political orientation. But in this case, neoliberal economics is an approach to economic policy that does not necessarily track with how we use the word liberal in other political ways. The neoliberal political project in economic terms is an approach to markets and government regulation of markets. The neoliberal project is to deregulate and to privatize. Those are the two key agenda items for the neoliberal economic program. You deregulate. You take away government regulation of the market. And you privatize wherever possible. You take ownership and the provision of services away from the government and put it into the hands of private, mostly corporations. In the 1980s, the 1990s, there was a big push for neoliberal economics, not only in the United States, but around the world. India embraced that neoliberal model in the 1990s. And Sinoth and others have been critics of that project for the consequences it's had on the lives of ordinary people, such as folks out in the villages. So the conventional wisdom in India, which is a fervent support for Indian nationalism and an embrace of this neoliberal politics or economics, Sinoth hasn't been afraid to be critical of those basic systems. So again, we see that in his reporting, he's looking at the real world as it is. He's looking at politicians and business people. He's not afraid to criticize them when he thinks they have pursued policies that are unwise or engaged in corruption. But he's also doing that in this larger system where he draws on his reporting to make critiques of larger systems. Okay. So that's how I look at Sinoth's reporting. A blend of on-the-ground reporting and analysis, weaving it all together, not from some asserted position of neutrality, 
but from an engaged position where he's not afraid to speak up about what he believes. 